We all know that data or model drift can happen within our machine learning operation or MLOps. Now the question is, how can we monitor drift within our LLM or Gen AI based application, namely our RAG use cases? Then, let's go! start make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video thank All you right, here it is the solution that we're gonna talk about is called evidently which they have open source a version of their monitoring solution that it will help you to evaluate uh, your ML applications namely text that we're going to talk about so regardless of LLM and Gen AI we do have certainly some text-based use cases like NLP and you might ask how we can monitor drift over text data or how our text data will change or drift over time when we're doing our NLP use cases. So they have released some open source versions of NLP with drift monitoring and stuff, which are honestly great and you can certainly give it a try. But here for this demo, I'm going to run a use case namely for drift detection for LLM based applications because we have already talked about how we do evaluation for your RAG or LLM use cases, but drift is certainly a part of evaluation and an important part of it. And I thought it's not really well spoken in the community. So thought to use evidently as, as a mean towards explaining drift and also how we can with open source solution, um, leverage some drift monitoring for our LLM application. Here's a Q&A for a RAG chat about that we have. Okay, so I'll go through my code I will add the link of this code uh, in the Discord link, and the Discord link is uh, inside video description. You click on Discord link, you go to the channel, and there's a section called reference. You click on it, and you'll get the link of this uh, reference code that I'm going to provide you a walkthrough. So obviously, you need to install Evidently, and namely the LLM version that we're going to talk about. And here on the top, I'm just importing the packages needed later on for the evaluation and drift that we talked about. For the data here, what they provide in the demo is a bunch of questions and answers. You can see here is how do I request medical leave through the employer portal? So imagine this is like a RAG or retrieval augmented generation that you're chatting with your own company data using, let's say, GPT-4 or any LLM that you have. We already talked a lot about RAG, so nothing new here. And then upon reading that, I'm specifying some columns like what's going to be the start time, end time, the organization, model ID. For example, I might have used different models for these Q&As. Let's say for all of them, we have used GPT 3.5, the region of the deployment, it was in production, and potential feedback if we have from the end user with the answer. Okay. So here is about the data. And this part is optional. Evidently, also provide the cloud-based version, and I think at some point you need to pay for, but it's not really needed if you go with open source. So in case, if you want to go with their cloud version as well, you need to provide your token and the URL. So the dashboard that you have for evalu evaluation will go there under your team section. So this part, I will skip that because this is optional. And then here, we need to do some mapping for evidently. We are going to tell that here's the daytime that we have, the daytime feature. As you know, drift monitoring certainly need to happen over a time. That's why time is critical to specify. And now you have to tell evidently what columns are text, of course, question and answer. And I do have some categorical features as we talked about on the top here, right? Okay, so the very simple metric that I'm gonna specify, you can define that over a bunch of descriptors. So evidently has a list of different descriptors, just one of them is the length of text. This is one of the metrics you can use for drift for NLP use cases, not just LLM use cases. So for withdrawing that over my data, you can see it's telling me what is the uh, length for the text, I mean the mean, the standard deviation, all these statistical approach, and if I click on details, uh, okay, there you go. I can see even how the length of responses, questions, or answers got changed over the time. And here you can specify some metric if you pass a certain threshold. That means maybe your rank chatbot is giving lengthy or very short answers suddenly over the time. That might be something wrong. Okay, so that can be an indicator of potential drift with the performance of your rag application. Okay, so uh, scrolling down here, here is another 
way that you can calculate drift, you can, you know, in feature drift, you can have the current and the reference. The reference is the data that we use for training, and current is the one that we compare the data with the reference training to see if there's drift happened or not. The same thing here. Of course, we do not have training data because we are not training a GPD model here, but if you have a reference and you want to benchmark how your chatbot is working versus the, uh, the, versus the reference, you can have that comparison and run the same evaluation for another descriptor here. Again, I'm using the length as well. And clicking on details, it's telling me that it was your reference behavior for length of the answers or questions. And now here's the current length of questions and answers. So you can definitely have this comparison and uh, define your metric or threshold based on this. All right, what else? I told you there are different type of descriptors. As another, as another example is, if you want to check if there is a specific list of words between answers or question, you can uh, write them down, and there's going to be a metric called mention compensation. Okay, if I run that, it's telling me, for example, how many times some specific word list here, salary benefits, payrolls, has been mentioned, true means yes mentioned, false means not mentioned, over the time. All right, another type of descriptor is sentiment. So sentiment on backend evidently use some machine learning models. You don't need to train or deal with them. This is provided by evidently that will do some sentiment analysis on your answers. For example, if I'm going to check how positive, negative, or neutral the answers of my chatbot were over the time, he just this quick descriptor call can give me this information and also over time as well. That can be another type of drift uh, getting evaluated for your chatbot responses. One thing that I really liked about that is not only you can have the descriptors coming in from Evidently, but also if you can have some descriptors coming from Hugging Face models. For example, there is a model from Hugging Face that will calculate toxi uh, toxicity of the answers of the chatbot, which is also important. Or there is another model from Hugging Face that will evaluate the emotion of the answer. I think they have 28 categories of emotions, and the one we're going to detect is just a neutral emotion. Just tell us how neutral the answer is from 0 to 1 as an example. So toxi toxi uh, toxicity and um, the new how neutral the answer is, two things. So I run the same thing over the first 100 rows. Of course, it can download some models from Hugging Face. And there you go. It's telling me how toxic the answers of my chatbot is and you can see majority almost all of them are actually zero that means we don't have toxicity and the, the values are too low almost zero so we're not worried about it but this can be also a good metric and of course respond how neutral the response is from zero to one you can see almost our answers are within the range of neutral nothing significant here we have a drop here we can later on check what was the answer here but now another type of evaluation as we discussed that we can use also as a drift monitoring is using LLM as a judge. Now here you need to put your OpenAI key, I added and I removed it before I record this video. And you can ask let's say GPT-4 or any model that hey be a judge and check for example uh, conciseness or how grounded the answer is. Any type of metric you define you specify what that is to your GPT or LLM. And here are the categories. If it's concise, say concise as if it's over detailed or contain unnecessary information, tell verbose. Or if you do not have enough information, it's not clear, say unknown. These three categories I want to define using LLM as a job. And now my descriptor is not hugging face, is not evidently packages and models. It's an LLM from OpenAI using GPT 2.5 using this prompt. Now think about it however you can define this prompt to define your metric. This is just one example. And I run the same thing again. And as you can see, almost one answer had was verbose, so too much unnecessary information. And the rest was very concise, which is good news. And also, you can get, check this over time as well, how many concise and verbose you have. And that can be a good drift evaluation. And lastly here, in case it's not a descriptor, it's just a summary of some columns that you have. For example, we have a column called feedback, and it's just telling me how many times we had non-feedback, upvote, that means they're happy, downvote, that means they were unhappy with the results and how it got changed over time. That can be a good evaluator for drift on your chatbot. If so many people are, are, are unliking the answers of the chatbot, that means there's something wrong, right? Okay, the another thing, uh, if you want to check uh, some summary of metric of your columns, you can also calculate the similarity, semantic similarity between the question and the answer. 
and he's using cosine similarity so if I run this it's telling me how uh, similar the answer is compared to the question and in the mean is pretty close to one which is perfect and you can calculate that over time as a good indicator also for drift if the questions and answers are no longer similar to each other and they are under a threshold that means we need to reevaluate or repurpose re re or redevelop our LLM based application and here RAG was just an example all right that was all about evidently Again, this is not really this is this video is not sponsored by them. I just found the open source version and I thought that that's a good way of showing some other side of drift and evaluation that you can think about with your LLM use cases, which are pretty trendy right now. And I hope you found the video helpful. If yes, I would be very thankful if you click on like button and write down your thoughts in the comment section and the questions. All right, thanks so much. There are two things that define you. First your patience when you have nothing second your attitude when you have everything dream big my friends believe in yourself and take action till next video take care